Hey everyone, time for an early look at work I've just started on getting some kind of handle on the next generation Switch's graphics capabilities. And practical work has started using Death Stranding Director's Cut, which is one of the most optimal console ports we've seen on PC and has DLSS support. So footage you're seeing here is taken using the closest equivalent GPU I could get to the mooted specifications for the Switch 2 graphics core. So quickly, let's talk about what we know about Switch 2 and how close we can get using off-the-shelf PC parts. So to produce the footage and the benchmark results, you'll see I'm using NVIDIA's RTX 2050, which, as counterintuitive as it might sound, is actually RTX 30 series Ampere Silicon. It's basically the same GA107 chip as that found in the RTX 3050. The difference being that it only has a 64-bit memory interface. Combined with the 12 gigabits per second GDDR6 we have, theoretical maximum bandwidth is 96 gigabytes per second, which puts us within reach of the kind of bandwidth achievable with the latest LPDDR5. Now, we don't know much about the Switch 2's memory setup, but some kind of LPDDR5 is likely to be paired with the rumoured T239 processor. So what do we know about the T239 then? From various leaks, we know it's using the Ampere architecture, just like the RTX 2050. We know it has 1536 CUDA cores, but we don't know the clock speed that they're running at. 2050 has 2048 CUDA cores, and I've pegged it at the lowest stable clock speed I could get out of it, just 750 megahertz. I'd hope for higher clocks on the T239, but I don't think any of us can forget how low Switch 1 clocks were on both CPU and GPU. Just as a quick reminder here, when docked, the GPU ran at 768 megahertz. So I'm kind of quite comfortable with the 750 I could get on the 2050. So you can't look at these benchmarks and say that we're getting Switch 2 performance here. The best I can offer you, and it's important to stress this, is that it's the lowest of the low in terms of performance we can get from any class of Ampere processor in the PC space. Switch 2 could be more capable, it could be less capable, we just don't know. Death Stranding's intro starts as a video before seamlessly transitioning into real time. And I'm running at default settings here, and I'm only benchmarking the real-time bit, obviously. So let's begin by looking at what I think will be one of the Switch 2's most potent features, DLSS. Essentially machine learning based upscaling. Here we're comparing native 720p and 1080p versus their DLSS 2 quality mode equivalents. Unfortunately, this cutscene is capped at 60 frames per second, so there's not much I can tell you about the performance improvement DLSS offers at 720p, except to say that a 52.3 FPS average at native res is boosted up to 58 FPS, but really, upscaling is delivering mostly a locked 60. There's more interesting information comparing native 1080p to DLSS quality mode at 1080p output. 34.9 FPS native plays 44.7 FPS upscaled, a 28% improvement with DLSS active. It's important to remember that DLSS has computational overhead, okay? I think it's going to be very, very useful for Switch 2, but it's certainly not a free lunch. Internally, we're rendering here at 720p, but the upscaling process clearly has a computational cost of its own. So upscaled 1080p has 85% of the performance of native 720p. The frame time differential between native 720p and upscaled 1080p in this example averages out at 3.35 milliseconds across the sequence. One more thing of interest, frame health, which is the consistency of delivered frames. A native 1080p is looking pretty gnarly here. This would translate into perceptible on-screen micro stutter, though capping to 30 frames per second and enforcing a 33.3 millisecond frame time with VSync might clean that up when there's sufficient overhead, but could cause some problems when there isn't. This next benchmark is interesting because in comparing native 720p to DLSS quality mode at 1080p, DLSS performance mode at 1440p and DLSS ultra performance mode at 4K, we're seeing how an internal 720p native resolution scales with DLSS and the hits to performance you get, the higher the output resolution. The cost of DLSS scales according to output resolution. DLSS processing clearly has an impact. 
You've already seen that 720p upscale to 1080p with DLSS means there's a 15% drop to performance and a frame time differential in the region of 3.35 milliseconds. At 1440p in performance mode, you get 71% of 720p native performance and a 7.7 .7 millisecond DLSS differential. And at 4K in ultra performance mode, you get just 51% of native 720p performance and an 18.3 millisecond differential between native 720p rendering and upscale 4K. Average frame rates, 52.5 frames per second at native 720p, 44.7 FPS in 1080p DLSS quality mode, 37.4 FPS in DLSS performance mode at 1440p, and finally 26.8 frames per second in 4K ultra performance mode. But you'll note some really awful stuttering there. It may well be we're memory limited here, as remember the RTX 2050 only has 4 gigs of VRAM and Switch 2 will likely have more available memory. So in theory then, 1440p at 30 frames per second using DLSS performance mode should be possible. The GPU then does a standard upscale from there to 4K. That might sound like a lot of compromises, right? Upscaling on top of DLSS reconstruction. But it's important to put all of this into context. Nobody's really expecting native 4K output from the next gen Switch, right? Not on challenging games like this. More important is that performance targets are hit consistently and that the output image looks okay or even good on a 4K screen. And that's the fundamental weakness of the Switch that we have right now. It works as a handheld, but with so many games running at 720p or even lower, much lower in some instances, the docked experience can look pretty poor. But what do you think of this? The frame rate limiter in Death Stranding works fine at 30 FPS, delivering consistent frame pacing at the intended 33.3 millisecond per frame. So returning to the intro, which is far more demanding on the GPU than most of the gameplay, we're mostly locked at 30 FPS with just occasional dips below in the most demanding areas, seemingly heavy on post-processing. Remember, we are running at just 750 megahertz here. Traversal in the initial area to the cave uh, that first proper meeting with Fragile remains at the frame rate target, and so does the following cutscene. In fact, pretty much everything hits 30 FPS, a consistent 30 FPS to be honest, but it's not a total lock. So, here in episode 1, in this particularly heavy confrontation, there can be some issues, as frames really heavy in post processing can certainly make a dent into the frame rate. So look, this is my first attempt at experimenting with an ultra-low performance Ampere GPU and it comes with a range of caveats, which means you shouldn't be equating this as totally equivalent to whatever Switch 2 will be doing. Remember, even with this low spec, we have more CUDA cores and we don't know the clock speeds for Switch 2, which could make all the difference. We aren't factoring in CPU overhead here at all, which will have an impact on available bandwidth. We're also not caring at all about power budgets. But what I can say, is that running this GPU at 750 megahertz is nowhere near the same frugal power limits we saw on the original Switch. Maybe clocks will be higher? Well, I'm not sure we can count on that, but even so, I added 250 megahertz increments to the GPU and rebenched up to 1.25 gigahertz on 1080p quality mode. Chose 1080p quality mode over native to ensure that CUDA cores and tensor cores are put through their paces. In common with the AMD handhelds I've been testing recently, the higher you push clocks, the less efficient the GPU becomes. At one point I had 500 MHz working, but unfortunately the laptop updated its firmware, and since then my ability to use power limiting to get clocks lower than 750 MHz on this RTX 2050 just disappeared, which is a bit of a shame. Still, this is quite an in-depth look at what a low-power Ampere GPU can do based on just a few hours of testing, but I'll leave you with some more of the 1440p DLSS performance mode footage. And as always, thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.
so long. It's not like the legend to come in late. Had to wait out the storm. Lost my bike. Sounds like you've been through the ringer. Luckily, our goods are in perfect condition. Well, you did keep us waiting, but everything else seems to be in perfect order, so great work. We'll be awaiting the next delivery. Bridges corpse disposal. Sam Porter, I presume? Right. Not the touchy-feely type. Document said you had some kind of phobia. Bridges corpse disposal? What happened? Look, gotta get a move on. I'll explain as we go. Come on. Come and take a look. He's got a date with the incinerator. How long since he flatlined? We don't know the exact TOD, but I'd say it's been upwards of 40 hours. He wasn't quarantined. Not sick. This is a suicide. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. 